Hello everyone, welcome back. It's finally a uh, lovely, beautiful, sunny blue sky day. Feels lovely out, finally. Um, so we can get a lot, crack on with a lot on the boat. Uh, the plan is to basically get the, get the water out of those bilges. So we're gonna do that first, get the floors up and just start pumping all the water out of that and then see underneath, it, everything needs a good clean. Uh, so yeah, isn't, um, yeah, isn't she beautiful? Look, nice sunny day, really shows her up. Okay, not so much right now, but I can picture her all done. We're gonna have, uh, I mean, we're not this far in, but I'm, you know, visionary, sort of a navy blue and white top sides would be beautiful. And yeah, it'll be great to get her in the water. The plan is, this project, I reckon, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say a year, but anything could happen in that time. So who knows? So anyway, I'm gonna crack on, get into those bilges, pump the water out. So um, yeah, I'll see you inside. We're gonna uh, lift up this floor. We've managed to pump out the water, or most of it, there's still a bit left in here, but we're gonna lift up the floor this is the first time me lifting up as well, and we can see what's under here. Hopefully, it'll be quite dry because we've done the hand pump, pumped everything out. So, let's lift this floor up. Let's see what we've got. Oh, bloody hell. Oh. I should have really hoovered this. Random spoon. One teaspoon. Get all this mucky stuff out of the way. All this. Still water in there. Not too bad. Let me get my torch for us. Let's just have a quick look through the water. Oh, there goes my foot straight in. Bloody hell, right. right. Give me torch. Uh, at least I pumped out some of the water. Oh. At least I didn't go all the way to the bottom. Because that's what I wanted to check on here is that we have the keel whizzing filled in. Because what we're worried about, if you remember, we had this transducer, didn't we, that we pulled out the back, and it just sort of, like a magician's hat, it just kept on coming out. So I was scared, I say scared, I was worried that, you know, this, had, this was open. What's that there? Some sort of plastic. Right, we've got some sort of film. Ugh, look at that. Nasty, oily film there. Ugh. Ugh. Right, I think we're gonna stop here. We're losing the light outside. But this is disgusting, look at that. Ugh. What about in this one where I just put my feet in? Can't even see anything, it's just black. I thought I'd give this uh, bilge pump a go. I was just seeing where the old, uh, sorry about the lighting. Just seeing where the uh, pipe work goes for it. And if I uh, start pumping, you see the diaphragm start moving on, you should hear the water. There we go. So we'll give this a go. We're obviously pumping something up. You can see, but I think it's hard to do with this with the camera in there. But there was a lot of water at the bottom of here, and at the very back, I can't really get the camera in on it. But at the very back, through at the very back, let me just see if I can get a better angle for us. 
through here at the back, down the bottom, there's quite a bit of water. So, by, by using this bilge pump, we're uh, certainly pumping it out. So we must be pumping it out over uh, under the floorboards. So let's just carry on, see what we get. There's a lot of rubbish up there. I don't know if you can see that. Look what that looks like in there. That is minging. That looks like granddad's toilet in there. That is awful. Right, it's probably going to take me a few goes to get this out. So uh, I'll just let the camera go and we'll see how we get on. Let's keep going. Start getting all this water out, I think. What we do is just get rid of some of this, get some of this rubbish out, and then start hoovering this lot in here. So uh, bear with me. I'll play something over the noise of the hoover, and we'll see what happens. here as well. So it's obviously joined, there's a little hole down there somewhere. Look at the state of that. Right, there's a bit of um, where it's been damp, a bit of uh, timber here, frame for the flooring that's just completely, I don't know what that is, completely rotten. So it's something to, I mean loads of things have to be replaced. But can, yeah, Let's just carry on pumping and see where we get and then we can uh, lift up these floorboards. If I can, I'll try and lift up this floorboard and we'll have a look underneath that once the water's pumped out. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to carry on with that. Carry on with that pumping and then hopefully once I've pumped it out, I'll be back again. Basically, look at the state of this. Look, if I show you what's coming up. Lovely. Look at that. I mean, I do have a bilge pump to uh, that we could try and pump this out with, but unfortunately, um, because I've got the scrape and there's lumps in it, I don't want to block it up or damage that or anything, so I'd rather just do it through this um, cheap hoover. So uh, let's carry on. Let's keep going. Okay, welcome back to the bilge, uh, where we've uh, where you saw me get involved, lift up the front. We saw where I put my bloody foot through the water. Um, but if we have a look now, I'll show you. Look at that. Much better. Well, much better than it was. So if we go through, let the camera just get the light, I'm just losing a bit of light. You can see we've managed to get all the water out and get most of the gunk out. If I just pan the camera around for you. There we go. See just all the dirt. So these are all quite good nick. I think the diesel, oil, whatever has probably protected this. But also it's got um it's got fiberglass on it anyway protecting it. These battens obviously have to be replaced, as you can see there, but also where we because I wasn't sure if this would just went straight down to the bottom near the kill. But this pretty much is the kill, isn't it? This backfield here. But I hope you might, I can't really show on the camera, I've got my torch on me, but that is a void that goes down. You can just see the water reflecting, drop down. That's where the other transducer was poked down there, so they had two, one for a backup. So hopefully we can um, look at what we're going to do with that, because that is a great place to lose spanners, sockets, screws and all sorts. 
Pete's kindly. Say hello, Pete. Say hello, Pete. <laughs> Pete's giving me his torch. Let me just uh, shine it down there and show you. Oh. There's some pup. There's a couple of pipes down there, Pete, and there's a blank bit of wood and more muck in. Looks like diesel as well. It doesn't show on the camera. Got some red stuff down the bottom, mate. Probably want a fill tank empty there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because we just checked the uh, diesel tank and that's empty, so all of it's in the bilge. So Pete's going to crack on with the tank. Um, because we've got that to do in the next episode, doing the tank, and we're going to start disconnecting the engine, uh, ready for its lift out, which you can do see us do in the next episode. So, yeah, catch us, um, catch us shortly. Right, welcome back to the bilge. This time a little bit cleaner than before. So you can see before, a bit earlier, and now this is where it's been hoovered out. And we're, um, well, experimenting with products, but uh, Pete was saying, there's actually a product, if I show it to you, put it on the camera here for you, Kill Rock Barbecue Oven and Grill Cleaner. So as you can see, we've done, we've used it here. This barbecue oven cleaner, and then if we come into this section, we've run out of it, so we need to get some more. But this stuff has only been used with a degreaser and washing fluid. So as you can see, a comparison is coming out really well. So we recommend from this experiment. And also, if we, I mean, we've used a little bit of this oven cleaner on this one, what we kind of had left, and then this one was none, but with a degreaser and washing up liquid. And as you can see, compared to the oven cleaner product, up here, it's really soaked in, bitten into it and scrubbed up well. So yeah. Barbecue oven and grill cleaner. Highly recommended. Oh, look, they put it right through and join the. Um... What do I got? Yeah. <laughs> that needs to right. be chopped right off. I can get me tires. Oh, there's. Well, that's the earthing ground in why you can see the neutral on there. Sorry, the neutral wire. We know what's what. This is all going to be replaced, so I'm worried. Yeah. Put a... What has somebody done here? Oh. What have they done? Oh, right, we put a... Do we have a saddle? If you leave that uncovered, that actually gives me quite a bit more light down here. Right. Okay, because all of this is going to come off the wall. All of that, like that. So we've managed to get the two front bolts off, haven't we, Pete? Loosened up now, we're just struggling with the ones at the back. Four, four on the front, and we've got two on the back. Oh. We've got the type. Let's just set the camera up. Sorry. Oh, here we go. What, well, you've loosened it up? Oh. Either that, or I've just bought a burst of roid, one of the two. <laughs> I'm just hugging the engine. So this prop was uh, joined. Let's see if I can get on the camera. 
the old couplings have perished, Pete, here. You know, the, um, oh, I can see. the rubber just, yeah. flange couplings have all perished. Just done. So they can come off, but this prop was actually only held in yeah. by the, well, galvanic isolation, um, not galvanic isolation, the um, oh, electrolysis, strapping. sorry, electrolysis. Electrolysis strap, yep. Well, we, can, we can go into electrolysis at a different date. But yeah, these were just hanging on. So these are now disconnected, which gives us movement. Taking away the, uh, taking the, taking the prop away from the gearbox, and then Pete's just, uh, if we look over, he's just managing to ease up the nuts on the rear engine mount. Sorry about the lighting. I'm trying to get it so you can. Nobody likes it, rusty nuts. No, they don't. Elbow exhaust. Got that off. I'm going to um, disconnect it down the other end. Well, to be honest, I'm going to cut it off, Pete. To be honest, because this is rotten through. So. And then I'll drag that old one out. You want to cut off your rusty nuts? That's not a good idea, mate. <laughs> Here. Comes around the car, up here. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Sorry. That's all right. No, it's just going to be gravity. Gravity fed. Gravity fed. Banjo. There. I can't see. That's incoming. And then that's our tank. secondary filter off the tank. So that Just there. would ultimately have gone on there, film there, up here. So I can't. Ooh. That's all right. We'll see it when we get it out anyway. Oh, there we go. That's for that uh, spoon and foil I saw earlier, mate. Oh, it could well be. Nice sitting there on the top. We've got the throttle linkage. Can't see too much of what goes on around the back. Is that a do-it-yourself haircut there, Pete? What are you saying? <laughs> I say it's very professional. <laughs> that, right. What have we got on the arse end of this that's got to come through? That, whatever that is. I mean, to be honest, you can just chop that off. Because it's only whatever goes to over there, isn't it? Yeah. That's the transduce one in your hand. And that? No, that's a temperature or something. Oh, sorry, mate, that one in your hand that you oh, had. Oh, that, that one. That's the old transducer oh, one. Goodness. That one, yeah, some sort of... Um, oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's got coil on it. No, that's a capillary coming up to either oil pressure or... Well, it's got to be the oil pressure, yeah. not that capillary. Oh, yeah, oil pressure. There we go. Right. Yeah, there it is. That's the top of the capillary where your hand is. Yeah, we got there and... And then you've got a, you know, what sort of an analog pressure gauge there. That's the, the water inlet. Yeah, I can on see a it. ridiculously perished bit of knackety old, knackety old hose. Nice. So how we, and also, how is that, but oh, they've just got a bit of, um, if I could just aim it down there. Oh yeah, you can just see where they've used a bit of rubber hose and a jubilee clip to join it together. Yep. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back when it was done, that was probably all right. Just about. So this bit at the top here that I'm looking at is one is our primary fuel filter. Uh, yep. That one there has that got a sort of a lifting primer on it or anything? Uh, I don't think there it is. Will be somewhere. Um, you see what I'm thinking though? Yeah, it's going to those back nut bolts. So that then you can get a, a a ratchet on your end. It was what I was thinking. Well, the thing is, they detach from themselves anyway. Hold it, the spigot straight through, is it? Yeah, they detach because of the, um, where the, the flange meets this one, the rubber couplings are detached themselves from the actual prop shaft of the uh, gearbox. So that will free that away from that. Right, fine. We also don't appear to have any jubilees on the exhaust currently. Right. But we did, it's very rusty. All right. I can see it here. So in theory, that exhaust will just come straight off then. Yep. Right, so we've managed to, um, I say we, it's the royal we, Pete's done most of the hard work, managed to take our nuts off of the engine feet. There's one there, I'm just about, I've opened up, luckily we've got a bit of sunshine. Got a bit in there. Engine feet. There's one just there, but you're saying the nuts, they're nutted up, aren't they, Pete, with the threads we're pointing up? Yes. So now it's ready to sort of lift off those. 
We've taken the uh, panel off and sort of just disconnected a lot of the cable in. A lot of this is going to go anyway. Um, put a nice uh, strop ready for the ready for the crane to to lift straight out. So that's all set up, ready to go. But as you can see, got a bit more nicer nicer area around the engine bay with the panels moved. And with this engine out, we can then start looking at inlet seacock, which we've got down here, which we'll be able to get to better. The packing gland. So the packing gland greases up our stern tube, which if I can just point you out, it's just here on our stern tube. And then we just give this a turn and it pushes the grease into our stern gland. Couplings, couplings are pretty perished, aren't they? So I think we're going to have to um, look at look at non-existent. They've they've gone they've totally debonded from the from the box. Yeah, so we're going to have to look at that diesel filter, and um, yeah, so that's all ready to go, ready for lifting. So I'm going to go on the mast, start putting some straps on the mast, uh, put them round either way because it's easier because um, they charge by the 15 minutes or something like that on the crane. So if we can do as much prep work as we can, it helps the uh, the yard to come down with a crane, lift it straight off. As long as we've done everything right, and uh, I don't see that we should, or shouldn't, shouldn't of, shall I say? Um, so yeah, catch us in a bit. Bye for now. Oh, I've invested in a new muff as well, just to let everybody know. So there it is, as you can see. So hopefully, the sound will come back, come through much better. Um, I think this is a good time to call it an end to this episode. Uh, thank you again for watching, uh, for liking, subscribing. Uh, so. In the next episode, we're going to be disconnecting the engine. I've already spoken to the yard, and the yard, uh, we've got it booked in. Serena's got a date with the crane. So the crane's going to get the mast off for us. We're going to get the engine lifted out. So that'll be in a couple of episodes um, for when I'm ready to film all of that going on. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Bye for now.